When you behold the cross, and you behold the resurrected Christ, and when you behold the ascended Christ who sits at the right hand of the Father, you no longer will just remain where you are. Gospel, gospel means good news. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is the good news that Jesus came to this world, died a gruesome death for us, was buried, rose again after three days, and ascended unto heaven, and that he's coming back soon in the clouds of heaven. The Bible says that every eye will see him, every tongue will confess that he's Lord and Savior for the glory of the Father as a testimony that he's glorious. The fact that God himself gave his only begotten Son on the cross, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So this is the message that we convey to preach tonight. And for every person that is under the sound of my voice, I will plead with you. So this is a plea out of the heart that you might just stumble upon the words for a few minutes. If you happen to be passing us by and stop by and maybe say hi or, you know, have us pray for you and love on you and care for you. Because uh, we live in a world today, you might agree with me, that is going down south, right? We see many things happening around the world. There's a lot of violence. There's a lot of you know, blood shedding, there's a lot of riots and looting in the United States and all across the world. There's a lot of corruption, you know, whether it be governmental, whether it be societal. There is such a thing that is called sin that is taking over the world. And you see, people don't understand that there is such a thing that is called sin. Many would, you know, the, would prefer to be oblivious to the fact that we live in a sinful society. However, also denying the fact that there might be a spirit out there that is conducting people, a spirit that might be taking over people and people uh, might be overcome by that, you know, spirit. And that spirit is none other than the spirit of Satan himself. And that spirit is not a physical person. Satan is not a beastly creature with horns on his head and also with a fork in his hand that is, you know, running after kids and seeks to destroy people, you know, in the physical realm. No, Satan is actually a spirit that is taking over this world. And today, like never before, we see in these last days that Satan is taking it you know, over the minds and the hearts and the souls of many people, which is why people are enticed you know, to live out their selfishness and their sinful habits. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And you might agree with me, right? God bless you. We have people that testify of the goodness of God here. People that were probably changed, most likely transformed and came to Jesus. And just like them, us too, you know, can actually testify of the goodness of God that brought us out of you know sin and brought us into the light and the reason why I want to indulge you on sin tonight is because sin is a matter in which many people around the world most people actually indulge in right and sin could be anything sin could be you know from you know raising a fist on someone to violently hating someone with your heart to stealing you know and every person has stolen you know even myself I remember from when I was a kid I have stolen candy from a candy shop and none of us can actually go against that, uh, you know, reality. So there is a truth that is going on and sin is deviating onto God. Sin stands in the way between us and God and, you know, uh, prohibits us from drawing close to God, which is why that sin needs to be broken. So sin is like, uh, if I had to exemplify it, if I had to give you an example, you know, sin is like a wall that stands between you and God that, you know, prevents you from, ha from having a relationship with God. And for the longest time ever, men have been under, you know, the spell of Satan. They've been under the spell of that spirit, you know, that changes our mind, under the spell of our hearts, right? And people are rebellious in such a way to God that is abhorring unto God and despicable today. But many of us, you know, would rather actually live our sin. Why? Because it is way too difficult to come across an old image in the, in the mirror and say, hey, there must be something that must be done at that point. Now, maybe I should be turning away from my sin. Maybe I should be repenting. Maybe I should be going back to God with a full commitment, with a heart, right, that seeks after God, that seeks after the things that God loves, right, the things that God desires. And that is what specifically the Bible tells us, that expressively, you know, out of the words of Jesus, you know, all the world, the whole world has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. However, you know, God has made a way through Jesus Christ. The Bible says, once again, that God so loved the world that He gave His one and only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him, shall not perish but have everlasting life. However, you know, God did not come into the world through Jesus Christ, right, to condemn us, but that through Him we would be saved. When we decide to reject the Bible, when we decide to reject the true light that was prepared before man from the foundation of all things, or before even anything was founded or came into being, that's when we ourselves, you know, are taking a decision to go against God. That's when we ourselves are condemning ourselves. Why? Because God lays out a, you know, a, a choice for us to make a decision upon that choice. And it's either you reject that choice or you accept it gladly, right? But most people have actually rejected, you know, the Son of God. Most people have actually walked against the current of God. Most people don't want to know anything about about God. Most people, you know, don't care about the things of God. We would rather care about 
you know, how we're going to be dressed tomorrow, the things that we're going to buy, you know, from our phone to our car, you know, to, to anything else, right? The place that we're going to be attending, the friends that we want to have, however, when it comes down to God, we don't care. When's the last time we actually, you know, taking a, a moment and said, hey, Lord, thank you for everything that you do. God bless you, my friend. So this is for you. Thank you, appreciate uh, that. Teaching my man. son how to share. Teaching my son how to share. God bless you, so man. this is a blueberry muffin. Amen. Amen. Uh, this is uh, I don't know how to say it in English. The shepherd pie. Amen. Thank you so shepherd much. Shepherd pie. Okay. God bless your heart. Man. Appreciate water, your generosity. Right? Thank you so much, bro. Hallelujah. Thanks for watching your kids and boys of the Lord, man. Thank you. Amen. So. God bless you. God bless you, little man. Love you, all right? Thank you, man. Thank you. So that's the spirit right there. You see, today we don't teach our kids to admonish, you know, uh, 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 to admonish them in the ways of the Lord. Most people admonish their kids in the ways of the news outlet, the mainstream media, you know, as to where this world is actually heading to. But we'll come a day, you know, this society will be crumbling down and, you know, this society will be robbing your kids out of their true liberty, the true freedom, right, of really understanding who God is and His character. You know, we might actually disagree with the message that I'm actually proclaiming today and the message that is selling forth. However, this is a true message that God wants to raise up your children to become men and women after God's own hearts. And see, the society tells us that, you know, it's not a, you know, our duty, it's not our, our job to raise our kids, it's not our job to educate our kids, and it seems like, you know, they're stealing slowly, slowly, you know, the liberty that we have in terms of how to, you know, make our kids become better people, how to look up to God, you know, and, and what He has to teach us in terms of how to teach our kids. So today, this is my message to you, that Jesus Christ is here to teach your kids, not only your kids, but teach you also how to live a life in conformity to Him, how to be righteous, how to be holy. It's because the Bible says, as a matter of fact, out of the words of Jesus, that you ought to practice righteousness just like He practiced righteousness. You see, many people today will stand, you know, in front of me and say, I'm a good person, you know? So how do you define good, right? What is the moral constitution? What is the perfect standard as to how good you are? Because many people, you know, call themselves good, but still fall short in different areas of the life. And when we compare ourselves to other people, two things could actually come out. It's either we're, we're a better person or, or we're, we're worse people than other people, right? But when it comes down to the things of God and when we start looking up to God as this God that is holy and perfect in all of His standards, that's when we fall short of the glory of God. And that's the need, you know, for human beings to actually look up to God and find that solution in none other than Jesus Christ our Lord. And I know that people will be hateful of the message of the gospel, and it's, you know, no doubt, and, 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 and the reason why we're like that is because it's bigotry, right? When we start talking about God or the things of God, that's when we start, you know, being hated. But if I stood here and spoke about anything else, if I spoke about murderous thoughts, if I thought about, if I spoke about uh, abortion, if I thought, if I spoken, if I had spoken about homosexuality, everybody would pat me on my back and say, hey, you've done, you've done a good job. I spoke today, man. It wants to hear about Jesus. Who cares about Jesus? Yeah, it is a camera, bro. Have you ever seen a camera before? No. That's the camera it's right the, there. First time. Uh, first time you see yeah. a camera. How about you actually come and talk to me for a second, bro? A What's your name, man? I love your smile, bro, man. You look like you've got a good, good heart, man. You're a good, you're a good human being. Yeah. What's your name? Kareem. Kareem? Yeah. You're Muslim Kareem? Yeah. I'm a Christian. Do you still love me? Yeah. You love me? Yeah, I believe. Okay. Can I, do you think I can, I can be Christian and love you? Yeah. Well, let me tell you this, man. This is the love message that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you to save you and redeem you from your sins, man. You might not believe it, bro, because I'm an ex-Muslim myself. And I know exactly what, what's going through your mind right now. Why is this guy a what's Christian today? Right Why is Tell he a Christian today? Why is he not a Muslim, man? Man, let me tell you this. Jesus bro, saved me and Jesus can save you, bro. Night, bro. God, I love you, man. I love you, bro. I Jesus love you loves you even more. God so loved the world that he gave himself for Kareem. So if Kareem believes in him, you would not perish but have everlasting life. So this is the message of the gospel. That Jesus came into the world not to condemn the world, but that through Him, you know, the world might be saved. And today we're here to say that, you know, don't remain your condemnation. Accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Put your trust in Him. Give Him your whole life, wholeheartedly. You know, give yourself to Jesus with a wholesome heart, soul, and mind. And Jesus will come and you will dwell in your heart. You know, the message is such that this world is going down south, my friend. This, is going, this world is going down a road of perversion. This world is growing rampantly evil by the day. The Bible says that the iniquities on the land would have grown, you know, bigger and bigger. And that, you know, the violence of man in their hearts would have, you know, rapidly grown a thousand times, you know, more than the beginning of age. When all of, all of this started, it was, you know, thousands of years ago when Adam and Eve ate from the, you know, uh, uh, from the, 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 the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And today, when we look around us, nothing has changed. It's the same thing. The same stuff is going on, you know, the same sins, 
but even worse than before, right? The same iniquities, worse. People's hearts are completely deceitful. Above all things, there is something that is called sin that sits in the hearts of people. The many have actually walked away from God. Many have risen their fists in God, against God in pride and rebellion and in violence. And nobody seems to actually be looking for God. You know, the Bible says out of the words of God himself, that when God looks down on the children of men, what does he see? How about you tell me what God sees? He sees a flawed, you know, violent race that is depraved and that hates God, you know, the whole heart. And God in His mercy that is renewed every day and in His love, you know, gives you the ability to stand out from your bed, to walk out of your houses and go on endeavoring the things they endeavor every day. However, we are still very restless in our hate towards God. And in our depravity, you know, we seek for things that this world could actually provide in terms of pleasure and distractions and selfishness rather than saying once and for all, listen, I'll get on my knees this time humbly, brokenly, and I'll come to God with a repentant heart and maybe God will change my heart, my mind, and my soul. And that is expressively what Jesus says out of his own words and out of the words of other prophets and apostles throughout, you know, the age. They have said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent because Jesus Christ is coming back repent believe the gospel believing the gospel and believing upon the name of jesus is not to simply you know proclaim yourself as a christian or claim that you know god through a relationship but it's to also abide and ab obey god through his commandments the question is rather if you are obeying god's commandments or not are you neglecting god on a day-to-day -day basis while you're walking with the lord are you connected to god or are you affiliated and associated to god by a religion rather than a relationship because a religion won't do anything for you. Your cult won't do anything for you. Your psychologists won't do anything. Your meds won't do anything for you. So what if you've got all these meds that, you know, you think could help you eventually? Everything will be, you know, trashed down. Everything will be vanished and everything will vaporing up from your cell phone to your meds to your clothes, a place that you'll be attended to your friends. You know, but only Jesus remains because throughout the age, Jesus has always been the same from everlasting past to everlasting future. And the gospel is such that it's a message of good news that is provided onto you, each one of you guys tonight, if only you would heed your heart. The Bible says that your word, oh God, I have hidden in my heart so I would not sin against you. How many of us actually hide the word of God in our hearts? How many of us would like to actually follow the Bible? Open up the Bible once and for all and see, we know what the Bible has to say for itself. You know, when we have fears, when we have doubts today as a Christian, I, you know, I, I stand, you know, I stand in face value, you know, with what God tells me. And I open up the Bible and, you know, I've got an answer for all my fears and doubts and all my questions. But where are you going? What's your life like? You know, what is your aim in life? What is your goal outside of the Bible, outside of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ? What is your aim and your goal outside of the good news of Jesus? What is your goal and your aim in life as you actually walk obliviously in the sea of life, thinking that you've got it all figured out, thinking that, you know what, you've got all your answers. The Bible says that the fool has said in his heart that there is no God and that a foolish person does not heed on to a good correction and reprimand. But we're here to say that it's never too late. Today you can actually turn on your heels and you can heed on to God, you know, for a good rebuke. It doesn't matter, you know, a good rebuke sometimes is a good thing. You know, if we're walking towards that burning house or that burning whatever, you know, hole, you know, it only makes sense that out of love we'll, we'll be outside, we'll be in the cold here telling you that it's never too late. You can turn on your heels, you know, like love is not always to pat someone on their back. You know, all, love is not to always agree with someone. Love is not to always say the things that you want to hear because you could be very subjective in your understanding, right? That is completely relative. However, love is to actually say things sometimes that could be harsh to a certain extent, but could be also bringing a change, bringing transformation that is for the best. People, you know, hope for joy and, 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 and love and happiness according to this world. However, they don't hope for truth. You know, the truth is such that Jesus is still seated on his throne today. And that Jesus is coming back soon one day. Whether we want it or not, whether we reject the truth or despise it, you would agree with me, man. It doesn't make a difference because Jesus is still who he is. Because he is the truth, the way, and the life. He said, nobody comes to the Father except through me, right? And all the other means and all the other ways are all dead end. Because whatever you know, you're following in life, whether it be an ideology, whether it be a you know reality that is completely flawed, whether it be a you know religious men, all of them are buried on the ground. All of them are dead. If you line up all these ideologies of this world, everything is vapor. Everything is what but a vapor, you know, in the sight of God. But Jesus is the same from everlasting past to everlasting future. You know, the Bible says that God is appointed a day 
to judge this world with righteousness. And today, just like when you know COVID-19 happened, if I had told you that you know these things and these sequence of events would happen, and that we would be house arrested one day, and that we would be isolated and wearing a mask and social distancing, you would have laughed me to scorn. And today, just like that, I'm saying that there's a day that God is coming back in the clouds of heaven. The Bible says that the Son of Man will come to render judgment upon this world. And every eye will see Him. And every tongue will confess that He is Lord and Savior for the glory of the Father. God bless you, my sister. I'm pretty sure that you know the Lord, right? You've got a relationship with God. Hallelujah. Get right with the Lord. And the reason why we're saying this is because we care about your souls. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, the Bible says we persuade men. Why do we persuade men? We persuade men because we know that there is such a thing as hellfire. And hellfire is not a pleasant place, my friends. And I know that many of us don't believe in hellfire because we were told that hellfire is a, you know, myth. It's a fictional story. It does not exist. However, the Bible says otherwise. Did you know that Jesus, out of his own words, verbatim spoke, as a matter of fact, about hellfire more than he actually spoke about heaven? You know, he said, God bless you, my friend. He said that it's a place of endless torturing and suffering where the worms will not die and where the you know teeth will gnash and will be wailing in hellfire. So God has set before us today, you know, heaven and hell. What will it be, my friends, you know? So I want you to choose because I don't want to puff up on you. I don't want to scare you off. That's not the reason. That's not the basis of, you know, what I'm trying to do here. Because even, you know, Jesus did not come to condemn. He came so, you know, you would have life and life more abundantly, just like that. As disciples of Christ Jesus, we're called to go on and preach the gospel everywhere we go unashamed because, you know, the power of the gospel is a power unto salvation for those who are saved, but yet it is foolishness for those who do not believe. And I'm pretty sure that it's foolish unto you. Why? Because the light that came into this world, right, has rendered judgment on us because out of our own decision making, we have a decision to make. And guess what? Based on, you know, what we make out of these decisions, we will live off the consequences of our actions. And one day we will have to pay the price. God bless you. And and one day we will have to. God bless you, my boy. And one day we will have. You can stay here. You can stay here. You can stay here. And one day we will have to pay the price because God is not a God to be mocked. The Bible says that whatever we sow in the spirit, we will also reap in the spirit. However, whatever we sow in corruption, we will also reap in a corruptible body. So today, get right with God. I'm pretty sure God is trying to pierce through your heart, my friend. And you know, God can make a way where there's no way in your life. God can actually give you love on top of that love which you you probably don't understand that it's not true love. The true love of God is that, you know, Jesus Christ out of his own self gave himself on the cross. His blood was spilled on the cross. He was nailed there. He was hanged on a tree while being laughed to scorn. And I'm pretty sure that some of you guys don't understand it. But guess what? When, when you stumble upon it for a second, when you try to visualize what happened to Jesus on the cross, when you understand that the Bible says that Jesus did not see it a robbery to be equal with God, and although that was the that was the case, Jesus still distracted himself out of out of his demeaning, came down in the likeness of man, and became a bond servant, and then was also you know sent to the cross, the worst form of death, the crucifixion of the cross. And while he stood there, he said, "Forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they're doing." Do you know of a greater love than that kind of love that Jesus gives us? God bless you, officer. 